So for $97.34, not only did we get our five sneak peek packs that you normally get, but then we were also able to get a full box of Cyberstorm Access. And needless to say, we made so much value, ladies and gentlemen. We got our three lilies, our three sleepy memories, a vicious Astroud. Yeah, we're, we're looking good. This is some value. Let's dive into today's video. Did you like that intro? I bet you did. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, feeling a whole lot better now that I took a, a couple days to recover and just sort of get my life in order. I really do appreciate all the patience and love and support that you all always are showing me. So smash the ever-living boo-boo memory stain. You know, because purely happy memory. It's a memory to smash the boo-boo stain off of that like and subscribe button. <laughs> so we could climb even further beyond the 1,100 subscriber ladder. I really do appreciate all the support. And I'm so thankful to each and every one of you. So if you haven't seen my What Happened video, go watch that. And I kind of fill you in on what's going on. But yeah, we, we plussed hard today off of our uh, sneak peek, core booster premiere, whatever you want to call it. Um, we were able to get our normal five packs for entry, plus a box for $97.34. Right now, boxes for Cyberstorm Access are going for about 80 bucks a piece. So we definitely made some money. Pulled a vicious Astro, the whole nine is fantastic. So with that being said, I want to go ahead and throw my hat into the ring with Purely. Purely is going to be the next meta deck that uh, I have decided to play. And this is a very... Very complicated deck to play, ladies and gentlemen. You really need to know what you're doing when playing this deck. You know, yes, it's going to be a tier one deck, but man, you've got to know what you're doing. You're not going to be able to pick this deck up and just go into a regional and start smacking some ass. Like, you really need to know what your shit does and what your lines of play are. So I figured I would throw my own version of Purely into the mix with everybody else talking about Purely. Um, this is by no means like a perfect build. It's still in the testing phase, but I still wanted to at least show off some things that I've been trying to cook with um, in regards to this deck. Now, uh, before we get into the deck profile, the side deck's pretty much irrelevant. Uh, you should definitely be playing Santa Claus because Santa Claus is busted um, and maybe it even exceeds Encore to some sort of extent. I just don't know what I want to do for the side deck yet. So I feel like the extra deck is uh, still also a little bit in the works and the main deck for sure. You know, just the main thing is don't worry about the side. The side, I'm sure, will change over time. So let's go ahead and dive on into this here. So let's go and go over the Purely stuff first. We're playing three of the regular Purely and then three uh, Pearly Lily. I'm just going to call them EVs because Purely is too hard to say. So we're playing one EV and then three EV Lily, uh, three Droll, three Valor for the hand traps. You can get away with playing a lot of hand traps in this deck, similar to like Sky Striker, which is really cool in that regard. And I feel like this deck operates very similar to Sky Striker in the sense of it plays a lot of spell cards and can play a lot of hand traps. Uh, EV and EV Lily are your main go-to EVs, for lack of a better term. Um, yeah, they're just, they're really fantastic cards. For the discard engine, we are playing the three Cobalt, e or three Cobalt Eagle, one Cobalt Eagle with three Snow. Um, so all of these purely quick play spells discard on resolution. So they can still be ashed and stuff, but they're also not once per turn. So if I activate a pretty memory and you ash me, I'm just going to smile and say, thank you, you wasted your ash and proceed to play another pretty memory if I open up two. You can ditch the snows in order to, you know, summon out a purely off of the quick play spell, and then that will trigger the snow to search you another card. Other cards that you can play as well as Volcanic Shell, but I don't really like Volcanic Shell just because of the fact that if you go into time, you have to pay 500 life points to get that search uh, of the shell to grab you another shell. And so if you go into time, then that can screw you over. You could also play Brow just to get a free draw. Um, because then like if you summon out something like purely Lily, the brow will be forced to trigger on Shinlink one because it's a trigger effect. And then you can use Lily on Shinlink two, you can get a search and then the brow would draw you a card. So that seems pretty nice. That's like getting an engage effect off. Um, you know, if you've got the three spells in your grave, you can also draw, uh, snow also can just deck thin you because that it just searches for itself. So it, there's a lot of different ways that you can go about building this deck. You could even go with more of a dark old engine. So 
There's a lot of ways that this deck can adapt and be very malleable. And of course, we're playing the Cobalt Eagle with the Triple Rainbow Bridge to help search out our field spell. That's why I'm debating on cutting Terraforming or even playing a third straight, purely street, but we'll talk about that as we get to it. And of course, the hand traps are just hand traps. I really want to fit Ash Blossom in here somehow, but the problem is that whenever you excavate three off of the original purely, you don't want to be hitting your hand traps and putting them on the bottom. And that's where it's sort of a double-edged sword because, yeah, you can play a lot of hand traps, but you also want to be hitting your purely spells off of the purely. Uh, good, moving on to the spells, we're playing two copies of Talents. I was playing Thrust, but it's like, Thrust is honestly kind of bad in this deck, because the majority of your spells aren't normal spells. Like, in this case, in this particular build, you're, if you were to play Thrust, your only targets would be Talents, Terraforming, Bridge of Salvation, and Purely Leap. Like, that's it, and that's not very good. So, take for that what you will. We're playing one Terraforming course to get to the street. Three sleepy, three pretty, three delicious memory, three happy memory, uh, three purely, or my friend purely, uh, three straight purely street, three rainbow bridge of salvation, one purely leap. That is a lot of tongue twisters, ladies and gentlemen. So why are we maxing out on pretty much all these? Because you want to hit these off of the purely, and you want to have as many names as possible, and they're not once per fucking turn, so it's like, why not? Delicious, I feel, is the best one next to Sleepy Memory because Delicious gets you to Plump, and Plump has the effect to attach two spells or traps from either grave to it as a material on a quick effect. So that seems really damn good. Um, well, actually, obviously, it's good because it gets you to Noir or X Purely Happiness if you're going for game. Uh, the Sleepy Memory, of course, allows you to do the draw. We all know what that does. Stray Purely Street um, basically insulates you from things like Valor and Imperm so that you could special summon out your Lily and not have to worry about it getting negated. Um, and on top of that, too, when you have My Friend Purely and Stray Purely Street up, you basically lose no advantage if the opponent does decide to Nibiru you. Um, my friend purely and purely street if you're able to get those set up on your first turn you should be winning the ball game because these pretty much just recur you back any resources that you may lose uh from a nibiru if you happen to play into it or like if the opponent tries to board wipe you or even kaiju like your noir you know i've had so many people kaiju my my five material or higher noir and i've got purely street and my friend purely so i just get back three quick play spells from my grave that just went to the grave because you kaiju me and then purely street's going to get me a level one purely for my decker grave so then I just get more pluses. And if you don't beat me that turn, you're going to be screwed, Sugar Boo Bear. So, and then we already talked about the Bridge of Salvation. And purely Leap is Leap. It's it's really good. You only need one of it. Um, people say that the targeting up to three purely monsters in the grave and shuffle them, shuffling them into the deck is not very good. But if you get into a grind game situation where you start going through a lot of your purely names, it's really good to be able to shuffle those back. Um, or even just to hopefully, like if you're trying to dig for follow-ups, just shuffle them back in, get that free shuffle, and hopefully have a follow-up for the next turn. For the extra deck, we are playing two Zeus. I would like to somehow fit in a third Zeus. Assuming that Zeus doesn't go to one, you know, off of an upcoming balance that we are probably getting any day now at this point. Um, Zeus is just so disgusting in this deck. That's why you see players playing Santa Claus because you can just drop it out in defense to the opponent's board. It acts like a kaiju. You swing with, you know, your big purely exceed monster and drop a Zeus. And now you've got a Zeus that can use its effect 20 times. You know what I mean? So it's it's really good in that regard. One happiness. I got this thing up to like fucking 7,300 attack one time. It was hilarious. Two noir because it's basically a god card AK, or also a, uh, a crooked cook. Uh, one downer magician. One at purely happiness. Two beauty. Two plump. One of the Lyra Lusic Ensemble Robin. You can usually make this turn one if you open up uh, enough quick play spells. You get out two of the original purely. You can make the Ensemble Robin. Uh, and then, you know, stack a Noir over the Plump and be good to go. You actually want to do that vice versa in case you get nib, but you know what I mean. Uh, one Appaloosa, one Lingaribo because Nightmare Corruptor Ibley is a card and Diabolsis needs to be banned. Uh, and then one Anima because you're playing level ones. Uh, side deck is, like I said, it's just kind of in the testing phase. Three Nib, three Lightning Storm, three Dark Ruler, three Xyz Encore, three Evenly. You can kind of make this for whatever you want. You know, if you're watching this deck profile, like whenever it's a week old, month old, whatever the fuck, you know, however the meta has decided to shape up. But these are just cards that, you know, you could be playing just depending on the meta. Like Dark Ruler destroys uh, six Samurai, or I keep on wanting to say fucking six Samurai. Super Heavy Samurai, Jesus Christ. Um, because they can't play any spell or traps, so they literally don't have an out to Dark Ruler. Um, Xyz Encore, of course, for the mirror match, evenly, which needs to go to fucking one. Um, just being such an amazing card. So this is currently what I'm messing around with when it comes to purely, just to show kind of a couple test hands here. Boom, boom, boom. One, two, three, 
four, five, this hand's fucking disgusting. So you activate the street, you activate my friend purely, you already have both of these established. So your main goal at this point is to get a Noir set up or, yeah, or even have purely leap sets that you can just use it in the opponent's standby phase and draw a shit ton of cards. I'm not going to go into like uh, combos here because I mean, I feel like that there's already so many videos on that at this point. But like, if you get a hand like this where you open up a couple quick plays, you've got discard fodder, and you've got both of these, like, yeah, you're winning the ball game. Like, your end board is at the very least going to be a noir with probably a couple sleepy memories attached to it, and you're going to be drawing a couple of cards, um, you know, with that opening turn in the opponent's standby phase. So, overall, what are my thoughts on the deck, and how is it that you can prepare for it? Honestly, like, I do think the deck is going to be good, but we have so many outs to this deck, ladies and gentlemen. Like, yeah, Noir is a crazy card, but, like, we've got Kaijus, we've got Santa Claus, we've got Hand Traps. This deck shits the bed if you droll it, and, like, they don't have enough engine in their hand. Like, they, they just, they, they hate their life. Valor's okay if they don't have the street established, but your main thing that you're going to want to do is to keep that Noir off of the board, whether it's Kaijuing it or somehow running over it. I don't know how you're doing that when this is a non-once-per-turn fucking Phoenix Wing Wind Blast, except it goes to the bottom of the deck. So it's going to be interesting to see what it is that people decide to do with this deck, whether it's a Dark World engine or whatever. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be really interesting. It's a very fun deck to play. Definitely requires a good pilot, though. So do keep that in mind. If you feel like your skill level isn't at the level of being able to see plays down the line that you can make or plan properly, um, maybe try a different deck. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. This deck, I feel like there's just so many counters to it. Like, it's it's going to be a tier one deck, but, like, it's not going to be, you know, I, I would argue even, like, cash tier levels. And, like, even then, people hate cash tier, but it's, like, we're not in a tier zero tier element format. So as long as it's diverse, I think the community will be happy. So, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you again so much for all the love and support. Please keep it up, and I will see you in the next video.